going on family um i promised you guys a hot topics video today i am going to apologize in advance that um a lot of the topics that you guys asked me to talk about were deleted um i mentioned it on my facebook page by the way if you're not following me on facebook i encourage you to go over and follow me on facebook the link is always down in the description box just in case you don't want to click the description box my name on youtube i'm sorry my name on facebook it's the same as it here, here is on YouTube. It's Thick Chick Blogs, okay? Um, but we are going to discuss a few things in this particular Hot Topics video, okay? Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is this uh, Tennessee man who severely beat his girlfriend's three-year-old son over the last piece of cheese cake. You got, let, let, let me click on this right here because I, I want to um, actually have a discussion with y'all about this BS um right here you guys i mean need to be uh eradicated immediately okay immediately okay let me read y'all a little bit of this foolishness all right it says the tennessee toddler is in critical condition after his mom's boyfriend savagely beat him for eating the last slice of cheesecake anthony Goldidge allegedly freaked out after returning to his memphis home saturday night to find that the sweet treat had gone missing from the refrigerator. He is accused of dragging the three-year-old Todd out of his bedroom by his ankles. Cops claim the man then violently whipped the infant until he broke a femur bone in his leg and dislocated a vertebrae. I'm not even finna read no more of this shit. You mean to tell me that you that fucking fat. Now I'm a fat motherfucker. I look, I'm fat, okay? I'm fat. We all we can clearly see that thick chick blogs is fat. You see, I'm fat. We can clearly see that, okay? But you mean to tell me that you this motherfucking fat? That you beating the three year old to the point where you breaking his femur bone over some cheesecake? Really, Negro? And look, let me tell you the cra even crazier thing about this. See, y'all bitches need to know what type of Negroes you bringing in your house around your children, okay? You need to know what type of Negroes you bringing into your house around your children because this motherfucker right here, he had to show signs that he was a goddamn fool when you met him, okay? Of course, this is not his child. Of course, this is not his child. And from my understanding, the mother is the one who called the police when she came home and found out that this, uh, uh, Boy had this man had to beat her son and broke his damn leg. Okay, stop leaving these niggas at home with your goddamn children. I understand you might be dating, you might feel like you're comfortable enough to leave this nigga at home with your children. Hell, because this nigga, for him to do some shit like this, this nigga done did this shit with you around. He done probably whooped your kids with you around or yelled them to the point where my thing is this numero uno, you is not number one. No, okay, let me put it like this. If I'm ever in a situation where I'm dating a guy and I end up having a baby and I end up we end up breaking up and I get with another man, number one, this new nigga, he is you you don't have permission to beat my damn kids. Now, granted, I understand when you're in a relationship with somebody, you know there is a level of respect and there's a level of discipline that that person is going to have to implement as well, especially if you get married and you're living in the house together. But you are not finna goddamn whoop my damn chillin'. That that's left for me to do because you get a lot of men, especially um, you know, in today's society, if you get a woman who gets a new man and this new man starts whooping on this other man's children, that man gonna be ready to come and kill his ass. Cause he gonna feel like, no, that's for me, the the biological father and the mother should do. Not for your damn boyfriends. To be whooping on my damn children. I'm pretty sure a lot of you ladies out there probably have children. And maybe, you know, it didn't work out with their father. And you're with a new man. I'm pretty sure the father of that child, he don't want that new nigga you got beating on his damn kid. No, you call me. That's my job. I don't give a fuck that he living in your house. Okay? You not finna let no other man beat on my damn kids. And these Negroes, I don't know, maybe they got something against the, 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 the daddy or what. I don't know what the fuck it is. But for, the, for this nigga to beat this baby to the point where he breaking his damn famous. Execute this motherfucker because that's some crazy ass shit. He could have killed that damn baby over some cheesecake for real, nigga. For real, you that goddamn fat that you fin you finna kill this baby, damn they kill this baby over some cheesecake. You that fucking fat. Are you are you for real? Really? You okay? I I I'm gonna get off this because, um, 
Yeah, it's gonna piss me off. I'm gonna leave links and everything in the description box down below just so you guys can go and check out these old crazy ass motherfucking stories, okay? I'm gonna leave links down in the description box. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about, and this right here broke my heart, you guys. I mean, the last thing broke my heart as well, but this right here really broke my heart because the last baby, he, he got a chance, you know? He, he, he the, 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 the damn fool broke his um femur, but he got a chance. He gonna live, okay? But the thing that really, really hurt my heart is the fact that um, these two children that uh, uh, died in a house fire because their mother decided that she wanted to go out and get her fucking hair did and leave these babies at the house by their motherfucking self. Let, let me read y'all a little bit of this shit. When I, when I saw it, of course it pissed me off when I saw it, okay? But let me read y'all a little bit of this um, so y'all can get even more pissed off uh, 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 just like I did, okay? Yeah. Um, let me read y'all a little bit of this foolishness. All right, y'all ready? Let me, let me pause this because I don't need it. Um, talking and shit while I'm trying to do my video. Okay. It says, um, two children left alone in their Louisiana home were killed in a house fire while their mother was out getting her hair styled at a salon. Fire officials say they were still piecing together what happened at the home in Bastrop on Monday evening. But one thing is certain. State Fire Marshal Deputy uh, uh, Chief left her Sierra Johnson, I guess that's the woman's name, left her children unattended for hours, hours, as she was having her hair styled for hours, okay? The victims are four-year-old Tasha Thompson and three-year-old brother Clifton Thompson. Johnson told authorities that she arranged for a neighbor to look after her children, but she hadn't. Investigators later determined that Johnson, in fact, had made no such arrangements and that she returned home only after being contacted about the fire. There were two gas space heaters running when Johnson left the home. Some flammable material left by a heater in the living room caused the fire. Johnson is charged with two counts of negligent homicide. Family. And of course, this is a, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that white folks don't do this. I'm not saying that. But this was, this was a black woman who did this shit. Okay. This was a black woman who did this shit. What on earth is that damn serious? That you're leaving a three and a four year old at home for hours by themselves. My mama wouldn't leave us at the home by ourselves. I was 15 years old. 15. Okay. A three and a four year old. If some shit pop off. Three and four year old. They can't even reach the fucking door to get out. And I'm pretty sure the smoke alone probably put those babies to sleep. To the point where they, could, they, they didn't know what the fuck was going on around them. And you left a three and a four year old at home with a goddamn space heater going bitch. See, shit like this right here, shit right here, nigga, this shit right here make you want to literally just, just cut a motherfucker's throat. Clean the fuck off. Dead ass. This shit right here just hurt my heart. But you know what I'm thankful for is that this bitch was charged with two counts of negligent homicide. Because you, and, and hopefully Bertha, Big Bertha up in the pen, hopefully she like your fucking hairdo. Since you didn't decide that your, your motherfucking hairdo is more important. My thing is this. You mean to tell me, okay, you knew that you didn't have anybody to keep your damn kids. Bitch, why didn't you wait until you can get somebody to babysit or take them with you, okay? Take the goddamn kids with you to the salon. People have kids running around the salon all the goddamn time, okay? Or if you can't take your kids to the salon, if, if your neighbor, whoever, couldn't come uh, um, babysit your children, guess what? You don't go get your fucking hair done, okay? Is it that goddamn serious? Now two babies are dead because you a fucking dumbass. Let me, let me let me let me let me get off of that. Again, I will leave the link in the description box down below for you guys to check this shit out. Okay, moving on because family, it's, it's only so much I can take. I'm telling you, it's only so much I can take. Okay, let let me move on. Okay, let's talk about two chains and Nancy Grace right quick. I ain't got no link for this shit. But uh, I'm pretty sure all you gotta do is Google that shit. Type that shit in uh type that shit in uh, uh uh YouTube and you will definitely see it. Okay. 
Two chains. First of all, Nancy Grace is a loud mouth wench. Okay, she gets on my damn nerve. Now, sometimes Nancy Grace can be pretty cool, especially when she's you know uh, uh, debating with the 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 Chester the molesters and these motherfuckers who are out here committing these heinous crimes and shit. Now that shit is funny, but sometimes Nancy Grace can be just a fucking loud mouth wench. To where she try, I don't know, if she does that shit for TV. She does it for for shits and giggles. But that shit gets annoying real fucking fast. So she's on there debating with two chains about the legalization of marijuana. And of course, I don't know, maybe she didn't know that two chains is a very smart individual. Two chains graduated from college with 4.0 grade from average. Yes, he did. Okay. Two chains got a little bit of sense. So he was on there, you know, he was trying to talk to her and shit. Of course, she's talking over him. And she decides she wants to read some of his lyrics off of his uh, songs and shit. She want to read some of his popping bottles and smoking this loud you know of course she want to read the lyrics that two chains wrote okay and and i guess she's trying to use that as trying to make it out like he is you know some kind of hardcore thug or whatever she wants to make it out to be but of course he told her he shot a motherfucking ass down real quick with that he said no um my lyrics pay the bills, okay? You get a lot of these rappers out here, like uh, Drake. You think Drake is hard, baby? No, Drake was on motherfucking Nick Jr. On Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, whatever the fuck he was on. A lot of these rappers who you're looking at, like a lot of these kids and shit who idolize these rappers, a lot of these rappers, they don't do the shit that they rap about in their songs, smoking and drinking and all this stuff. Like, man, a lot of them do. But you got a lot of rappers who don't do the shit that they, they, uh, they sing about and rap about and shit in their songs. They do that because it's popular. They do it because they know that people are going to buy it and people are going to relate to it. Like Two Chang said, it's what pays the bills. But he was talking to her, telling her, okay, the reason why, you know, like me personally, if, he, if they want to legalize weed, fine. I have no problem with them legalizing weed. Let me explain why, like Two Chang's explained. You have never heard about anybody overdosing on um, marijuana. You've never heard about anybody geeking out so bad on marijuana to the point where they wanted to go rob, kill, and shoot some damn body. You've never heard of any of these types of things. Now, you've heard great things about marijuana, even with people with cancer. Marijuana is a great thing. You even have people who um, take marijuana for anxiety. It calms them down. The most I've ever heard of anything bad happening with a person with uh, marijuana is that they eat, eat you out of motherfucking house and home, okay? They eat everything you got in your refrigerator. That's probably the most, uh, the worst thing that I've ever heard about uh, people who smoke marijuana. So, of course, he was trying to school her on it. Then this other guy came on and he wanted to talk shit to two chains talking about yeah um yeah i don't think that they should legalize marijuana because it leads to other drugs and all this type of stuff now that this shit right here tripped me out because two chains told this dude nigga i you you look like you came to smoke some boy you even got on this goddamn screen okay look like you sneaking and geeking and let me tell you what was the funny part about that is that this guy literally was a recovering heroin addict and two i don't think two chains knew that but yeah, the guy was a recovering heroin addict. And Nancy Grace was caught on camera laughing. Yes, he told the guy, you look like you just came in this motherfucker. Uh, like you just got through doing something, motherfucker. Like you sneaking and geeking. Like, nigga, you, you smoke a little chronic. You smoke you a little chronic in your spare time, nigga. Don't come on here talking about you don't want them to legalize weed, nigga. You saying that for this television show. And of course, the man was sitting there talking about the, 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 got, got the stuttering and shit because uh, uh, 2 Chainz called his ass out on sneaking and geeking. So, shout out to 2 Chainz for putting Nancy Grace old punk ass in a goddamn place. He told you, she was like, well, what do you think about that? He was like, well, I was about to tell you before you so rudely disrupted me. And she was like, okay, well, go ahead. I mean, he really put her motherfucking ass in her place. That's what Nancy Grace need, okay? She needs somebody to put her in her mother fucking place but sometimes like i said when she's putting the right people in their place like these motherfucking pedophiles and all these type of folks when she's putting those people in their place yes i love that shit i love that shit but when she's sitting there trying to talk with somebody who's actually talking some real shit it pisses me off so yeah shout out to two chains for putting nancy grace in her motherfucking place yes bitch yes yes okay let's move on swiftly and professionally because i don't want to make this video um extremely extremely long but you know it's, it's probably going to be damn near 20 25 minutes okay it, it just is all right so the next thing that we're going to talk about all right this one right here is another sad one we're going to talk about uh this guy who killed his ex-girlfriend her new boyfriend and then turned the gun on himself family okay let, 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 let's, let's talk about it. Let me read this. Okay. Putnam County deputies say a man went to Corky Bell Seafood Restaurant in East 
Palaka. I don't know what the name of this town is, but anyway, on a Wednesday night to confront his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, okay, then shot both of them before taking his own life. Witnesses told investigators that Johnny Kemp, 30, approached and shot his 38-year-old ex-girlfriend, Dietrich Berkeley, and her boyfriend, 40-year-old Travis Hall, as they drove into the parking lot about 645. According to, sheriff's, according to the sheriff's office, Kent shot them, then immediately turned the gun on himself. Okay. Investigators said Kent learned that the couple would be together at the restaurant and went there specifically to confront them, and that jealousy was apparently the motive in the shooting. News for Jax learned that Kemp had an extensive arrest record, including charges of robbery, aggravated assault, carrying a concealed weapon, battery, resisting police, trespassing, criminal mischief, and several tra traffic violations. Woo! Burley has requested an injunction protecting her from dating violence last year. But it was denied because she failed to detail at least two incidents of repeat violence. See, let me, let me, let me pause for a second. That's what I don't understand. If I come, like, I didn't know that there were so many rules to filing, getting, getting a restraining order. I didn't know you have to jump through so many fucking loops. Why do I have to prove so much shit? Because a lot of times you get these motherfuckers who sneak around and do this shit and they terrorize you. Why do I have to prove to you that I feel like my life is in danger? If I feel like my life is in danger, that's all you should need is my word. That I feel like my life is in danger for you to give me a restraining order. And a lot of times restraining orders don't mean a fucking thing. If somebody want to get to you, a restraining order really ain't going to stop them. But, you know, I, I mean, why? I don't understand why it's so hard for a person to get a restraining order against some damn body. Why? I, that, that right there, I don't understand. And another thing, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me keep reading right quick because I can go on a tangent. Okay. He would break into her house, calling her phone, stalking her, said Burley's twin sister. So she has a twin so sister. Um, he, he's always, uh, he always came driving past her house all the time. She called the cops. Nothing was done because they couldn't prove anything. Burley's grandmother, Betty Jean Hodges said Burley told her Kemp had threatened to kill her. That Sunday after I got out of church, um, I say with Dietrich, she said, Grandma, he came to my house to get me. I told him to leave. Hard to say it. I say, Grandmother, you've got to get a restraining order for him. No, granddaughter, you've got to get a restraining order for him. Her family, shattered by grief, suddenly finds itself planning for her funeral. She has five kids, five beautiful kids, said Berkeley's aunt. My heart is really hurting because I love my niece and I saw her all the time. She was a wonderful person. I just can't believe I'm in shock. I, I, I don't even want to read it anymore, but I'm going to leave the link below for you guys to read this. What's really sick and disturbing to me is that you have so many people out there that are so jealous hearted. So, my, my, and my thing is, this, maybe I don't understand it because I don't have that mindset, but there are so many other men and women in this world and for you to not have to obsess over one especially not have to take the someone's life because they don't want to be with you anymore because something didn't work out and they're not with you anymore because she's probably not with you because you're a damn psycho you have this this long extensive as arrest record number one i don't know about you guys but i told you thick chick blogs i do background checks on niggas okay i learned my lesson a long time ago, I do background checks on motherfuckers, okay? If you've been arrested for anything other than maybe a, you know, a, a, a failure to pay a ticket, because you do get some people who forget to pay fucking tickets, okay, and they go to jail for that. If you got arrested for anything other than shit like that, I'm sorry, maybe maybe I, I'll fuck with you if it was a long, long time ago. Maybe you juvenile years or some shit, okay? Maybe. And you didn't, I feel like you didn't change those motherfucking, you didn't change those stuff around, but nigga, you're going to have to prove yourself to Thick Chick Vlogs, okay? You're going to have to prove yourself to me in order for me to uh, give you a fucking chance. I ain't saying, I'm just saying, this is just my opinion. Because you get a lot of motherfuckers who do shit like this, who have these long records and shit, these niggas ain't changed, okay? These niggas ain't loyal. I ain't saying, I'm just motherfucking saying. But there are so many other fish in the sea. 
for you to not have to obsess over one person. But I understand it's easier said than done. And you got a lot of people out there that are just sick, mental in the head, and they're just going to do whatever the fuck they want to do anyway. I understand that. But this is so sad that you literally are so jealous hearted, so fucking um, screwed up in the head to the point where you feel like if I can't have you, can't nobody else have you. So you're going to kill me. Kill my new dude. And then kill yourself because you're too much of a fucking coward to go and do your time for what the fuck you just did. Now, ain't nobody going to sit there and tell me somebody like that ain't going to bust hell wide the fuck on. One way ticket. With gasoline draws on, okay? One way ticket with gasoline draws on. Shit like this pisses me off to no end. When people do this murder-suicide shit, if you feel like, okay, if you're so jealous to the point where you feel like you don't want me to be with anybody else, how about this? This is what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to kill your motherfucking self. Don't come over here fucking with me and my dude. Kill your fucking self and you just so jealous to the point where you can't stand to see me with nobody else. Kill your fucking self. That's what you do, Okay. Because I guess you figure, well, I don't want to go to hell knowing that she's still on earth with another dude. So you want to take me, but take all of us. Really? I I'm sorry. Shit like that just really pisses me off to no end. And I need the justice system to start doing something about when a person comes and complains to somebody about stalking and a person constantly harassing them. You don't need all this fucking proof. Investigate. Okay, stop saying you need all this proof before you can do something about it. And a lot of times you get people who have all this proof. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Stalked or um, what's the name of that movie? Uh, uh, Date from Hell or whatever it is. This lady was literally stalked so bad by this guy to the point where she literally had to move out of her home. She had to move out of her home and that still did not stop. She moved to a completely different state and guess what he did? He followed her to the new state. And the only way that the police did something was when the man came in her house. He was licking all on her mirrors. He was leaving his uh, uh, underwear, all type of shit, all over her bed, all over her house. And the only way that she was able to get them those people to do something about it was because she had she put up cameras in her home and she caught him on camera and they locked him up for breaking ring breaking and entering and then they got him for stalking and he got like 20 years but it took all of that that man could have easily killed her easily if he wanted to but he didn't see at the time he didn't want to kill her at that particular time he wanted her to be with him okay and he thought maybe eventually that she was going to conform and she was going to go ahead and be with him but he didn't get a chance to kill her and thankfully because that, you know, she got the evidence that she needed to get him locked up. But it's sad that the justice system is so fucked up to the point where you have to jump through loops to get a restraining order against somebody. A restraining order is just a restraining order. I shouldn't have to have a whole bunch of proof because I don't want this motherfucker near me. Because I feel like I'm in danger. What kind of proof? A lot of times, like I said, you get these motherfuckers who like, like 2 Chain said, be sneaking and geeking and shit, who do shit on the low to where you can't get no fucking proof. Unless you stalk them too. So the justice system needs to do a little bit of something about that. But I'm going to leave all those links and everything in the description box. I also want to say, I want everyone to keep um, the Ni Nigeria in your prayers. There were 2,000 Nigerians that were killed um, by the Islamic group. Um, what is it? Boko um, Haram. Um, they killed over 2,000 people. The media is not talking about it. it, it it's not even a whole lot. Of information on it because nobody's really reporting on it and a lot of it has to do with you know a lot of people are saying it has a lot to do with racism because you know they reported a lot on the parachutings which my condolences goes out to those people my condolences go out, goes out to anyone who is victims of terrorist attacks okay um but i really uh i feel so bad for the people in nigeria the nigerians that went on they said most of the 2,000 people that were killed were women and children and older people um who couldn't run fast enough to get away they said a lot of the people that lived in this town fled to um fled to the you know across the border because it was so bad like i said these people came and literally terrorized these people and killed over two thousand people in this little small town I mean, it's just it's horrible um make sure you send up prayers for the nigerians also the people um of the victims of the terrorist attacks in paris just just pray i mean like i tell people pray without ceasing because you never know shit like that can happen over here in america as well 
Trust and believe. These people are not fucking playing. They want us too. That's why I said we gotta um we gotta stay in that number. We gotta stay praying. We gotta I mean I mean pray without ceasing every day. Pray over your children before they go to school. Pray over your you know in the morning time when you're sitting down with your family, maybe you're having breakfast or before your kids go out. Just say a prayer before you go out because you never know. These people are so sick and uh uh fucked up in the head with their you know idiotic um uh ways of thinking that they have no um they have no uh, uh uh care for him a lot i mean you got these people i've heard that they had 10 year olds five year olds who they strapped bombs to little girls one of the suicide bombers was a, was a 10 year old girl who killed i want to say she killed like 30 people and, and, and injured a couple of hundred others yes they have children as young as 10 walking around with bombs on them. Of course, you're going to see a child. You're not going to think, oh, okay, this child is a suicide bomber. You're going to think it's just a regular child walking around. A lot of these people, they're scrapping bombs to children. They have children who are suicide bombers. You have these people, these um, Islamic groups, these uh, Muslims, these terrorists, or whoever they are who are um, uh, uh, recruiting people. On, now, of course, I'm not talking about all Muslims. I have a couple of Muslims in my family. I'm not talking about all Muslims. Don't get it twisted, okay? I'm talking about these idiots who are doing this shit like this. You have a lot of these people who are recruiting people on social media. Facebook, Twitter, all these types of places. You have these people who are, uh, are recruiting these people to do these hideous things. And hell, I've heard rumors that they're planning on attacking a lot of uh, some subway stations. Churches, schools, all types of things, okay? So, I, like I said, pray over your family before you leave home. Pray over yourself, whatever. I make sure when I get up in the morning, I say a prayer. I make sure before I go to, night, go to bed at night, I say a prayer. Because you never know um, when some shit's going to pop off. So, make sure that you're um, staying in prayer and all that good stuff, okay, you guys? Um, so, yes, keep those people in your prayers. Keep Niger the Nigerians in your prayers. And keep the people who were victims of the terrorist attacks in uh, Paris in your prayers. And um, let's just, you know, pray for peace because that, that's really what we need here in, in the world today. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about because this video is almost 30 minutes long. We're going to talk about the movie Selma, okay? Um, I have not gone to see Selma yet. Like I said, I'm going on Saturday. Today is Thursday. Um, I am going on Saturday to see Selma. And um, I'm re I really encourage you guys to go and see it as well. I'm going to read you a little bit of what, you know, um, a little bit about the movie. And then I'm going to um, tell you a little bit of a story that I have um, from when I was a child, okay? And then we're going to end this video because it is 30 minutes long. Okay, Selma. It is a, it, the, the, the movie is actually two hours and seven minutes long, by the way. I just wanted to tell you guys that because a lot of people go to movies and they really they want it to be an hour and a half long. This is a two hour, seven minute long movie. I do encourage everybody to take your children. You have a lot of people who said, um, I forgot the guy's name. It was a superintendent of a school. They were going to um, pay for the children to go um, to see the movie Selma, but they decided to change it because they said they don't want the children to see it because they used the word fuck in the movie. Trust and believe. Kids hear a lot worse than fuck. Take them goddamn kids to see this movie. I, that's a whole nother story, but that, that's some bullshit. Um, the fact that they don't want to take the kids to see the movie because it says fuck or whatever. Okay. It says, although the Civil Rights Act of 1964 legally desegregated the South, discrimination was still rampant in certain areas, making it very difficult for blacks to register to vote. In 1965, an Alabama city became the battleground in the fight of suffrage. Despite violent opposition, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his followers pressed forward on an epic march from Selma to Montgomery and their efforts, efforts culminated in President Lyndon Johnson singing the Voting Act, Rights Act of 1965. This movie is so great, you guys. It, it really teaches you a lot about your history that you really didn't know, okay? You have a lot of kids who don't know anything about Bloody Sunday. You have a lot of kids who don't know anything about... The four little girls who were bombed, um, who who died in the uh, the church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama. You have a lot of people who don't know about a lot of these different things that happen. You have a lot of kids who don't know about, you know, a lot of kids who don't understand that there were steps um, that people had to take um, in order for them to have the things and be able to do the things that we're able to do now. You have a lot of kids they think it they think it's always been this way, and I think it's really important for kids to understand and know their history. And um, I think it's really important to take, you know, just take the whole family. Make it a family night. 
make it a family night, family movie night. You go to the movies and then you go out to dinner, or you go to dinner and then you go to the movies or whatever. Um, make it a family night for you guys to go and see some. I really, really do encourage everybody to go over and support this movie. Um, it is a, a great cause, and from my understanding, they were nominated for a, a Glo Golden Globe Award for uh, Best Motion, Motion Picture. Um, and I, I, I really am praying that they um, win this award because it is a really, 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 really great movie. And they told the truth in this movie. They actually put in this movie, you know, a lot of people didn't know that Dr. Martin Luther King actually cheated on his wife, Coretta Scott King, um, quite a few times. People don't know that. They actually had the, what is the FBI, CIA, who were actually um, sending Coretta Scott uh, voice recordings of Martin Luther King Jr., um, cheating with other women you know and they actually were sending her these things in the mail you know yes so she can understand or know that her husband was cheating on her because that's how much of a vendetta they had against Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. before he was assassinated they really could not stand Martin Luther King Jr. at all okay they did not like this man at all they did not like him for what he was he stood for and they did not like him for the things he was trying to accomplish so um yes make sure you go in, over and see this movie Selma and take your children, take your husband, take your entire family. Make it a movie night, a uh, family movie night where you go out to the movies, go out to dinner, maybe go play a couple of games. Make it a make it a make a night of this, and um, take your children to see their history and understand what was going on. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of something about something that happened to me when I was a little girl. Um, like I said, I, I was sitting back and I was trying to think because I have told somebody I said I've never experienced a racist moment in my life. I've never experienced anything racist. And then I thought back to a time where every um, Halloween, my mom and dad, they I mean, they took us trick-or-treating every Halloween. I'm talking about dressed up. I'm talking about not now, you know, nowadays you take your children trick-or-treating maybe 30, 45 minutes. No, we went trick-or-treating. I'm talking about for hours. And we lived in a little small town. We used to go all around. Just We would get on the back of my dad's truck and just ride. We, we live in the country. We would get on the back of my dad's truck and we would ride around to all these different neighborhoods. Just trick-or-treating, having a good time. Me and my friend Sally. Yes, I had a friend named Sally. That wasn't her real name. But that was her nickname, Sally. And um, we were on the back of the truck riding around, you know, trick-or-treating and all this type of stuff. And we, like I said, we went to all different types of neighborhoods, all different types of people. And um, we went to this one lady's house. We knocked on the door, you know, trick-or-treat. And the first thing, like I said, the first thing that this lady said was, um, why didn't you go to the projects to trick-or-treat? It was a white woman, an older white woman. She was had to be in her probably 70s, 80s. She was like, why don't you go to the project to trick or treat? We're like seven, seven, eight years old, maybe eight, nine years old at the time. So I'm I'm like, okay, damn. I'm thinking she's saying this because, you know, ooh, they must have good candy in the project. You know, like I said, I'm seven, eight years old. I'm not really understanding what's going on. So she takes um, a sucker out of her candy bucket and she tosses it into our bag like this. Like literally throwing it in our bag. And we're like, okay, thank you. And we walk off. We go get back on the truck. And as we got back on the truck, and we told, I told my mom, I said, that lady said, um, asked us why we didn't go to the projects to trick-or-treat. She asked us, you know, told us next year we didn't make sure we go to the projects to trick-or-treat. You know, we're thinking, okay, mom, we need to go over to the projects and trick-or-treat because this lady's telling us some good candy over there. My mom actually told us to, I, I, I never did understand why she told us to do this. She told us, she asked us, what candy did the lady give us? I remember distinctly, it was one of those little suckers. It was still on the top of the bag. And she told us to get the sucker and throw it back in the lady's yard. And that's exactly what we did. And I, I never did understand. Like I said, now that I, I, I understand, I know. But I never did understand that that was a, you know, the, the lady was racist. I mean, we were like seven, eight years old. And this lady was tell, asking us, why didn't we go to the project of trick-or-treat to make sure next year we, we don't come to her house. We go to the projects and trick or treat if we want to go trick or treating. And I, like I said, I didn't. We didn't understand that she was being racist at the time. We just thought the lady was telling us you need to go to the projects because they got some good candy over there, you know. Until I told my mom about it, she made us throw the candy back in the lady's yard. So somebody asked me how I ever experienced a racist moment. That's the only because you know I live in Alabama. People, I guess, automatically assume that there's a lot of racist things that go on in Alabama. So, but I, I've never, like I said, that's the only racist thing that I can remember experiencing. Here. And like I said, if I've, I've experienced any other racist things that have happened, it was, you know, maybe I was blinded to it or whatever. But that's one of the things that I distinctly remember that happened to me when I was a little girl that was racist. Um, I actually lived, you know, the, the irony of this, I actually lived 30 minutes away from Selma, Alabama, which was, you know, where this Sorry, you guys, I don't know where that cut off at. But I lived about um, 30 minutes away from Selma, Alabama and about an hour and a half away from Montgomery, Alabama. So I lived very, very close to where these things took place and my uh, my grandmother was actually 
um, someone who worked in the cotton field. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the struggle. I came from the struggle, even though, you know, I grew up in a different type of setting. I wasn't really, um, I didn't really know about it, but it was happening around me, you know, but I was a little kid. I didn't really understand what was going on, but I do encourage everybody to go over and support the movie Selma. And, um, again, keep those people in uh, the Nigerians, as well as the people that were victims of the terrorist attacks in Paris in your prayers. Also, go over and subscribe to my daily vlog channel, Thick Chick Vlogs. If you're not a part of my daily vlog channel, go over and subscribe. And there will be more of these um, hot topic videos and just me coming and having conversations with you guys, but they will be uploaded here. Also, go and check out my work at home job channel. That link will also be down in the description box. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.